Welcome to the actual software training video brought to you by RBD Instruments. We provide innovative products and services to the surface science market. This video will explain the settings options and show you how to acquire and graph DC current data. On the front panel of the 9103, there's an on-off switch, USB connector, and BNC input for current measurement. The BNC has a 550 volts of isolation with respect to ground. On the back of the 9103, there's the recorder output jacks, which are plus and minus 2 volts DC per range, and there's also a chassis ground connector if you want additional grounding for the chassis. The settings that you can control include the range, which can be set to auto, or fixed ranges between 2 nanoamps up to 2 milliamps. I'll set it to 2 microamps for now. Next you can change the sampling rate, which is how often a measurement will be acquired, from 25 milliseconds to 10 seconds. For most spectrometer applications, 500 milliseconds is about right. You can also change the filter settings. The range is 0 for no filtering and 64 for maximum filtering. The filter sets the number of measurements that the A to D will average per sample time. The higher the filter setting, the more accurate the measurement is, but that also slows down the response time proportionally. A filter setting of 16 to 32 is typical. The offset now, when selected, subtracts out any leakage current that you may have in your test setup or specimen stage. The input can be grounded or shorted when not measuring current. This is useful for when the 9103 is connected to an OJ or XPS spectrometer specimen stage, which keeps the sample from charging. The bias is used to apply 90 volts to the specimen stage of a spectrometer in order to prevent secondary electrons from leaving the surface of the sample, which greatly increases the accuracy of the ion or electron current measurement without the need for a Faraday cup. You can also apply an external bias up to the 9103 instead of the internal 90 volt bias. On the right side, we have the actual version number, a shortcut to RBD Instrument Software Updates page, and a shortcut to the actual user guide, which was installed on your PC when you first load the actual program. So let's take a measurement. To do that, just press the Start Sampling button. Now I will turn on my current source and set it to 1 microamp. Okay, let's see what happens when I set the filter to zero. The response is faster, but there's more noise. Now let's change the filter to 64. The response time is slower, but the DAC gets more readings, and so the accuracy improves. For long-term graphing, you'd want to use a higher filter value. For most applications, though, 16 or 32 is good. From the current status indicators, we can see that we're sampling and that the reading is stable. The message light shows that we are communicating with the 9103. Okay, let's stop sampling. Okay, next let's look at the command console. This dialog box is how you load ASCII commands to the 9103. We'll send the Q or query command and the message box will display the results which include the firmware build date and how all the control parameters are set. A complete list of all ASCII commands is in the user's guide. If we type S, for example, for sample, we'll get one reading. So, using the ASCII commands is one way that you can program the 9103 for your own specific application. Next up is data graphing. The record options include out of range, unstable, and stability. By default, out of range and unstable are selected. The notation can be engineering with or without units, such as nanoamps or microamps, or scientific notation. 
I like engineering with units. These options are only for the raw data. The actual graph will always show nanoamps, microamps, or milliamps. The X options allow you to select the time of interest. The Y options include three graph types, positive, negative, positive, and negative. You can also set the baseline to zero. Okay, let's record. You can see the data values are being recorded on the left and that the data is being graphed in this area. Note that the response time is slow during, due to having a high filter value. The x-axis is showing the acquisition time in seconds. We'll acquire out past one minute so that we can look at some of the x options. Graphing current versus time can provide some really useful information that you just don't get with the standard picoammeter, such as beam current stability over time. Okay, give it a little bit more time. Okay, now let's look at the last minute. Let's stop the acquisition and select the X from option. If I select this copy, the graph is copied to the clipboard. If I select this copy, the data is copied to the clipboard. Saving the file will save the data to the folder that you specify. If I want to clear the graph, I select the Clear button. Now let's look at the POSNEG graph type. I'll select the POSNEG option, as for this graph will show both positive, which is typically ion, and negative, which is typically electron current. Okay, I'll start recording. And now let's give ourselves some current. I'll go program in a microamp of positive current. And there, now the graph goes positive. So we're going up to positive one microamp. Now let's reverse the polarity on our current source and we'll see the graph goes negative. Okay, back to positive. The raw data is, be re is being recorded on the left side And in the graph, we can see where I changed the current source from positive 1 microamp to 0. So for this type of graph, you would be using it if, for instance, you knew you were going to be going from positive to negative currents. Uh, for example, if you were measuring ion current and an electron beam uh, on a system, and you were increasing the ion current higher than the electron current, you would expect the reading to go net positive as well as other applications. Okay, let's look at the positive graph type. I have to select positive and then start recording. When I put positive 1 microamp into the 9103, the graph goes positive to 1 microamp. But when I change the polarity to a negative 1 microamp, the display does not go below zero. Only positive values are displayed. Go positive again, and the display comes back up. So again, only positive values are displayed in the positive graph type. 
Okay, the third graph type is negative. First, we select the negative graph, and then let's start measuring. I'll crank the current source up to negative 1 microamp, and the graph goes positive because we are increasing our current. So even though we're graphing negative current, if we have more current, the graph's going to go positive. And again, if we reverse polarity, the graph will not go below zero. So this graph type is useful for measuring electron currents on a vacuum system or any negative current source. Again, increase the current back up, graph goes positive. When measuring current on a target in a vacuum system, secondary electrons are generated which affect the accuracy of the measurement. By applying a 90 volt bias to the target, the number of secondary electrons produced is substantially reduced which gives you a much more accurate measurement. Let's ground the input and select the bias. When we measure current, the bias will be applied and the target will float up. With no input current, the reading is zero. When we stop measuring, the input will be shorted, which will ground the specimen stage. That keeps the target from charging when you're taking data such as acquiring OJ data or XPS data. So for this mode, normally used on a spectrometer, grounds the target automatically when you're not measuring current. Finally, let's look at the null. First, let me put a slight offset into the current. about 0.03. Now when I turn the offset null on, the offset current is subtracted and the reading goes to zero. Now I'll put one microamp of current into the picoammeter and we'll see that when it settles in, it's low by the amount of the offset that I subtracted. If I turn the offset back off, now the reading will come back to where we expect it to be. So this allows you to reduce the error in your measurements by taking out any small leakage current that you may have in your setup. For more information on this product, please visit our website at rbdinstruments.com. The 9103 USB Picoammeter. Thank you.